Let's take a look into Gordon Murray's Gordon Murray Automotive T50. It seems to be a very interesting super hypercar and how it correlates with his history in designing Formula One cars and supercars. Gordon Murray emphasizes that the T50 is um, refocusing the supercar on driver and the thrill of driving, which means a driver must skillfully work the technology presented rather than technology working for the driver. The T50 may seem like deja vu, spiritual successor or evolution of the McLaren F1 road car. That's because it was Gordon Murray who designed the F1's layout 30 years ago. The similarities are not on mere basic aspects such as three seats, with a leading driver position in the middle, carbon fiber chassis, mid rear mounted naturally aspirated V12 engine, and extreme compact packaging, but it actually comes down to some details as well, such as the return of inclined shear axis on the double wishbone rear suspension, an engine that has special bushings to act as mass damper on high road frequencies. And in an interview with Steve Cropley, Auto Car Magazine, Murray also highlighted the fact that it would have a large tachometer right in the middle, just like on the McLaren F1. Maybe it is simply Gordon Murray having free reign to a swan song and designing on what he sees as the ultimate supercar. So now um, let's start off on the uh, T50. Yeah? The T50 will get active aerodynamics and power downforce via a 400mm electric fan. The fan concept came directly from the uh, famous Formula 1 Brabham fan car, the BT46B, a car Gordon Murray designed in the late 70s, uh, 1978. However, that fan was connected to the car's engine. It was driven off a clutch. There are stories of Gordon Murray telling Nicky Lada to downshift a gear extra in entering a corner to keep the engine running at higher RPM and get the fan spinning faster and generate even more downforce. This was something Nicky Lada had to get accustomed to. With the T50, um, this driver scheme will be done without as the fan play a part as active aerodynamics. The T50 would adopt a 48 volts electrical system in order to get more out of the fan. The fact that this car has a ground effect fan has Gordon Murray written all over it, fitting for a car that would bear his name. The Chaparral 2J, that was the genius of Jim Hall, has two fans. Although similar to the um, T50, is powered in auxiliary, but not by an electric motor. So now let's take a look at the uh, drawing presented by Gordon Murray on the T50 and get some basics out of it. So let's start off with the uh, rear section here, where the uh, fan makes a return. Um, it got me quite curious with what looks like a horizontal uh, radiator mount. Is the fan that is used to generate downforce also used partly on cooling? Yeah. I sent an email to uh, Gordon Murray's website with a response that there are no further details on this, although the respondent did point out that the BT46B indeed had some cooling from the fan. Um, anyone who knows the history of the BT46B would know this side of its story on cooling and the FIA stewards. Yeah? The T50 might take this a little bit more seriously though, because um, it, it's a road car. Yeah? So, Maybe this is part of the extreme packaging that uh, Gordon Murray wants to um, get around. Initially, I had the impression that the T50 would run two fans, um, judging from the illustration, that the uh, exhaust would disappear towards the middle and in between the two fans. But obviously, the artist did this um, to highlight that fan. Yeah, The car is running just um, one down force powering fan. What is also clear is that uh, the fan looks to be trying to boost um, the diffuser uh, by scavenging it. The fundamentals of having power downforce is the ability to create downforce and not dependent on the vehicle's velocity. An example would be that the T50 would be able to create downforce at very low speeds where all other wing wonders would be caught gasping for air. So let's take a look at the floor and ground effect plan. The fan sits in line behind the engine above the diffuser. So is the fan going to gain access to the floor through openings around the engine on a sealed engine bay? Is the fan going to vacuum air through the diffuser, double diffuser style, having air ducts from the uh, lower diffuser giving access towards the uh, fan area? Or will the fan get a blanket cover around the diffuser with its own um, access to the floor 
suggested by this thick line. Let's move on to the power plant. 4 liters, 650 horsepower, 162.5 horsepower per liter, naturally aspirated engine. Extremely high numbers for a naturally aspirated race engine, let alone on a road car. This most likely is achieved by their target RPM ceiling, 12,100 RPM, while it comes with variable valve timing to make it drivable on the road. Just think of the sound it will be making. The engine also acts as a semi-stress member to the carbon fiber chassis towards the rear, and this is to minimize weight. And this is not uncommon on motorcycles to use the engine as a semi-stress member. To put this into perspective, a 12,000 RPM, 650 horsepower V12 engine is not far off when Formula 1 cars came back to naturally aspirated 3.5 liter engines, especially with those that run a V12 engine. In 1990, the Ferrari with Tipo 3.5 liter V12 spun to 12,750 RPM while producing 680 horsepower. The gearbox is a 6-speed manual and judging from the illustration, it looks very compact, probably a transverse layout. The McLaren F1 had a uh, transverse gearbox. The illustration also shows at the front of the engine an obviously large alternator which most likely has a lot to do with powering the uh, ground effect fan. Moving over forward to the cabin area, looking at the gear lever, this ledge shape uh, seems to show that there would not be a twin spar carbon fiber beam running through the cabin hugging the driver unlike on the McLaren F1 this would make it much easier for drivers to enter exit the cockpit a problem with the McLaren F1 having to access the middle of the car and then go over that twin spar frame emphasis again on that large tachometer also in this illustration is the pedal surface are right on the front wheel axle line which exposes the attention to detail. So that concludes this analysis of the T50's basic design layout. Being similar yet far more extreme in certain areas, with far more ambitious targets, few questions would arise on how this car would impact the McLaren F1's current market value. There is definitely going to be those wanting to transfer from the F1 to T50, and those who can't afford the current astronomical value of the F1 will be able to afford its spiritual successor. The mere fact that to drive a fan car would be an exclusive experience will also get a lot of attention. It is also important to note that in Gordon Murray Automotive's list to summarize the T50, first on the list was to be exacting engineering standards as was with the McLaren F1, which was the pinnacle of engineering during its time.